In this video, we're going to see how to determine whether a relation is a function or not. So we can be given a relation in three ways. And one way is as a set of ordered pairs. Often this is done in a table format. The first step is to determine whether you're given a set of ordered pairs, or a graph, or an equation. So obviously in this example, we're given a table. If you have a set of ordered pairs, what you want to look for is an input that has more than one output. So that means that uh, if you're doing XY table, you look for an X value being repeated, and then the two Y values are different. And that's actually what you see in this example, is the input value of 10, which is in the third and fourth columns, has two outputs. We can't have that if it's a function. For a function, every input gives you no more than one output. Since the input 10 has two outputs, which is more than one, 8 and 14, uh, the set of ordered pairs is not a function. So it's still a relation, but it's not a function. You can validate this by looking at it from another representation. So if you had a table, you can look at the graph. If you had a graph, you can try to find the equation. And uh, if you have the equation, you can look at the graph. So let's try to get a graph of this. I'll just use Desmos. And I think we were given five, three, and ten, eight, and ten, fourteen. And if you look at the graph here, you can see that it does fail the vertical line test. If I were to put a vertical line at 10, it would actually hit both of those points. Right? Vertical line test, a vertical line cannot intersect the graph at more than one point. And so you see that happening there. All right, now what if we're given the graph? So here's a graph, and we want to determine whether it is a function or not. For graphs, you want to use the vertical line test. So you know, imagine we have a vertical line. Take a look at that one. And it could be drawn anywhere. And what you want is you want it to only intersect the graph once or not at all. And you notice that if it's anywhere over here on the left, it only intersects the graph once. And even as it gets really steep, it's you would have to zoom in maybe, but you've got to know the behavior. It, until it goes vertical, it's only going to hit it once. Uh, right here, at x equals 0, that's a vertical asymptote. So the graph does not go across that at all. So the vertical line drawn there would not touch the graph at all. So that's OK, right? It can touch the graph once or not at all. It just can't touch it more than once. On the right side is the same as the left side. And I lost my, lost my line. On the right side, it's only going to hit it once. Okay, so uh, x equals 0 intersects, or does not intersect. Because that's, that's the vertical asymptote at x equals 0. All other vertical lines intersect once, and only once. So the graph is the graph of a function. Now how can we validate this? Well, we could get the equation. This should be familiar. It's a rational function. A simple rational function with the 
vertical vertical asymptote at x equals 0, horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, and it's negative on the right side, uh, the equation is going to be f of x equals 1 over x, but negative. And you can check by graphing that. Right, the last situation is where we're given an equation of two variables. Well, if it's written in function notation, then you know it's a function. But often we're just given one with two variables with the x and y notation. The assumption is that x is the input and y is the output. Um, we'll look at changing that idea around later. Um, but for now, you can make that assumption. And the trick would be to try to put it in this function notation. In order to do that, you need to solve for y. So let's take this and try to solve for y. Sometimes you can't solve for y. And uh, sometimes when you solve for y, what you get is still not a function. So we can subtract x from both sides. That's OK. And then we can take the square root of both sides. Uh, the square root and the square cancel. But when you take the square root of both sides of an equation, you need to add in a plus or minus. And that's actually where you get into trouble. Because of this plus or minus, a lot of these inputs are going to lead to two outputs, one where it's positive and one where it's negative. So since we have that plus or minus, y is not a function. So if you can solve for y, and you don't have the plus or minus, then you would be good. If you get the plus or minus, or you can't solve for y, not a function. Uh, you can validate this by looking at some of the ordered pairs. And uh, one thing you can do is you could actually put in an x value, like negative 1. And if you do that, Let's take a look at this. If x is negative 1, um, then we can figure out what y is by solving for y. And I guess we should just use this version if we're going to solve for y. So if x is negative 1, then this is 3 plus 1, which is 4. And this is square root of 4, which is 2. And so y could be positive 2 or negative 2. So part of the set of ordered pairs here includes these two ordered pairs. And remember, we can't have a set of ordered pairs where one input here, negative 1, gives us two outputs here, negative 2 and positive 2.